How's it going there? I thought I'd do another play for the YouTube here and I'll, <coughs> I'll do a slightly different way of doing a walk-in since Trump is a very popular shrimp play for Atlantic Salmon play here in Ireland for uh, fresh salmon so the hook is a size 10 on the bite so you can use whatever brand or size you want to go down small size 12s up to size 8s whatever you want but the particular one I'm using is an Osprey size 10 a Scandinavian stout and double so I'm going to tie on a rub of silver oval I'm going to tie it back to the thread hangs between the point and the, the point and the barbs and then I'm going to take my rub or my tag and wrap it back towards the back of the hook. As many turns as you want that you like to see. Now I tie that in on top, I'm going to transfer it between the legs of the double and underneath. This is the most secure way to tie it. So we started off tying it on top, now the the tag and oval is underneath. So we're going to bring this up now about the halfway point. The tail in this one is like in most of these Irish trump plays, is golden pheasant, natural this time. Breast feather, that's the bird there. I mean, no wonder what it is, it's the redder feathers at the side here that we use for the tail in these stout trump plays. So pick yourself out a nice one. I should probably get these all prepared beforehand. But And I like my tail, the, the length of the fibres and the hackle. And I'm going to use my tail to be about twice the length. Of the body, so just go through the feather or the the skin. Do you find a feather that suits? Sometimes it's not as easy finding one that has the right length in these feathers. But so there's one of the red breast feathers. There, I'm going to remove all the fluff and the flue that I don't need at the bottom. And then I'm going to expose the tip because I'm going to tie this on at the tip, which is easier said than done with these feathers. But just persevere and get the tip separated out. Once you have the tip up and exposed, tie it in tight against the, the tag. Come up a few turns, bend back. I normally break this off, but some people keep it in. I'm going to keep it in this time just to show it that it makes no difference. It just becomes part of the tag. It's not, it's not that critical. So, I attach my hackle plate as you want to. Whatever that was, off my desk there. There we go. Now we get back to the hackle players, attach the hackle players. Stroke all the fibers back with these fibers, it's just difficult to get the, the feather wound round and not get them caught in the doubles. You can sort it out afterwards with a, taking it off the lace or as you're doing it you can use a an old toothbrush if you have one they, they brush them back all out of the way if you want to, it's up to you. I don't panic too much, I just get them on and I fix it afterwards. If it's really, really bad, I'll take the hook out of the lace and uh, manipulate the feathers to suit. So that one's not too bad. Everything's pointing back on it. So catch it underneath. Again, I catch everything on my double hooks on the top or the bottom. Try to stay away from the side. That's just the way I do it. It makes no real difference. That's just, if you see me tying everything off on the top and the bottom, it's just something I do. It makes no real difference to the outcome of the play. I'm going to take this up because I want a wee bit of bulk there. And what I mean by you can take it off and just untangle these by blowing them and getting them all swept back into the position that you need them. These ones aren't overly bad, so. But if it was all caught and clumped together, that's one good way of uh, sorting that problem out. Just by taking it in the vice and untangling all your fibres. Now the next thing is optional again, I'll put it in just to demonstrate putting it in but it's not always necessary as flash, crystal flash. I'll show you what it is now in a minute once I put a wee piece off from the, the large group that it comes in and the stuff I'm getting now is getting near the end of it's the best stuff so I'm trying to pick two nice pieces. It's just this pearlescent sort of thin strand of material it comes in large bundle like that and you just cut it off. Put two strands in over long longer than the tail, one pinching loop, put a couple of wraps on, bend it back, take the whole lot back, back tight against the tail. So I'm going to make this as level as possible because I'm going to, normally the body on the Wilkinson Trump is silver flat tinsel so you put a rub on here and then you put flat tinsel and you rub it but another option 
is to use the oval again French oval that you would normally use by rub just cut off a longer piece and do the entire rear body and front body with this and this is what I'm going to do for these guys so I'm going to just quickly go up so I can get a nice smooth I want this to be smooth as possible no steps in it or anything at all help, it'll sit, help the oval sit flat and right back tight against the the hackle so now we cut this in on the bottom so when you turn it over the first time it completely covers the side so if you catch this on the side the first turn will only sort of half cover the fly if you know what I mean try your best to put a slight tilt in the oval this will make it slide on top of the oval but slide off onto the thread if you try to make this touch and turn as you could be here so sort of use the, the nature of this, the material to help you out a wee bit if you can sort of slide it on with a slight wayward tilt and then it'll slide back off as it's you're winding back on the thread and give you nice touch and turns well. That would be the plan we're on. Just take your time. This makes for a good strong body too, and a body that's slightly different than just the flat tinsel. I'll take one more turn there. And the flat tinsel's got a wee bit more glamour, a wee bit more shine to it. Just something you can do when you're tying your own flies, plan a slight variation on the theme. And uh, these would be slightly simpler to tie too for somebody just starting off instead of having to tie in a silver body and a rub and do all that there you sort of get it all out of the way put that to the side because that's going to do you for your front body now the front hack or the rear hack on this way there's a, a fuchsia type colour that too but it's really light magenta but I've seen a lot of people say it's fuchsia in colour but it's really an intense light magenta so pick your the hackle it sizes up nice what I'm looking for is a hackle length that will provide from this point down about a quarter into the back of the tail it's not critical to the point where if it doesn't happen it's going to wreck the fly but it's just nice to get close to that if you can in your proportion so I tie these in at the tip so expose the tip you can use necks or saddles it's entirely up to you and I would tie them in at the top for this kind of hackle it's not a body or a palmer hackle like on a palmer trout fly I would tie in at the base most head hackles or these hackles that are tied in like this they're just going to be wound on like almost a head hackle I always tie in at the top that's again personal preference and how you like to do things so we're going to stroke all these fibers back and just get the Get the hackle on as best you can, don't panic if they roll forward or you can always control them as you as you wind them. Just don't let too many stack out in front and just keep winding. The more you put them on without controlling them back, the more of a hassle it's going to be in the future. Now this one's not doubling over the best, I can see the way it's sitting and swollen back on one or but what I'm going to do is wind it up to I get to the point where I like the hackle and I'm going to unwind it again. Sometimes that happens with just these type of feathers. They don't all sit well too good, so you might have to do something like this just to get it all to sit the way you want it to sit. So now that's as much of the fat hackle fibers I want to use up. I'm going to take it back because there's at least three or four of the fibers that are just lying crooked and I don't like the way they're sitting. So. And some of them are even broken. I don't want them either. You can be as picky or as not as you want about it, but just get it to how you like it. I like seeing broken ends in there if I can at all help it. Sometimes you don't notice them and I don't think the fish will notice them but when you're ahead you've tied the fly as good as you can you'll have the most confidence in it when you fish it. So That's all the fibre I need. If you squash that back it's about a quarter of the length under the tail. That's perfect for me. Now I'm going to come up now and just put on a few turns here now as best you can turn it sideways. The feather to try not to trap on too many of the fibres. We're going to go up a couple of turns here because we don't want to bulk up this area too much. With the oval going over the top, I want a fairly smooth body. And at this point, we're going to travel up. I like the front of my body to be way shorter than the back, so I'm going to leave it there. Just a few winds, a few turns, but that's just what I like. If you want to make the bodies exactly 50 50, that's up to you. Again, catch this on at the bottom. Keep it on the bottom so the first turn covers both sides of the hook. You don't have no exposed bits of thread underneath. 
or on the sides it's just the way I do it so again get your turn on and then just try and slide it up onto the oval and then it'll slide itself back off and hopefully give you nice touch and turns it's very hard for me to see with that light shining on my face it gives just the best possible look to the fly but it makes it very hard for me to squint under the light and make sure they're all touching so hopefully that they are all touching so again that's your silver oval body instead of putting flat tinsel and this is a Wilkinson shrimp so the next colour you'll need is blue <coughs> so get yourself a blue hackle size now when I want this folded back I want it to be the same length as this hackle again it's not critical if you can get it that way great if you don't manage to get it that way it's not the end of the world the flight will still be fine don't panic too much about it and this blue hackle is getting a bit picked out for size tens so we'll see what we've got here that one looks all right again I'm going to tie this in at the top so I'm going to expose the tip and then remove all the fluff and flue that I don't need at the bottom and just pick the spot in the hackle where I want to start from I don't want to go too close to the tip I don't want too many of the shorter fibres on there but I want some of them it gives a nice bell shape to the hackle if you go too far to, or back and just use the length that you need and get a couple of turns on it can be a very flat looking hackle as you don't have a few of the shorter fibres in behind there sort of stuffing it up near the bottom to give you that nice sort of bell shape well the shape I like to see anyway Again, is that really important? I don't know. But when you're tying your own flies, you put your own wee things into it, and again, it's the confidence factor that do you think the fly is going to work good? You'll fish it good. So just get your hackle on. Get the stand be 12 o'clock. Grab and pinch them all back, but let them slide through your fingers and your thumb on this hand as you're winding the, the hackle fibers on. You don't want them all to clump and stick on the top. So again, once it's 6 o'clock, release it once it's 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, get the 6 o'clock position, then release. And then fix the fibres and come back from the 6 o'clock position to the 12 o'clock position, same thing. Now that's getting very close there now to where I want it to be. I don't tend to count turns, I want to see what I want to see, so that looks a bit good there. Try and just catch it through there and wiggle it through as best you can, not to catch too many of the fibres on and this one's just a little too much so we're going to cut this one normally I would like to fold it back but it's just a little too much and I'm going to fold back the rest of those fibres anything that may be pointing forward come back to the back of the eye and right back on against the head back as tight as you can get it if you have issue there just want to tidy it up now anything that's pointing forward, like there's a few wee fibres there, I hope just my scissors need a good shirt. I need to get a new pair. So that's the Apache you can put on jungle cock there too if you want to. It's a bit of they're long ties, but they're straightforward. It's all fairly basic beginner skills. It's nothing too complicated. And if you've got Atlantic salmon in your area, you fancy giving it a go with this. I have another video on the Apache shrimp, the band special shrimp. They're the three shrimp flies I wouldn't be without. Especially here in this country, so again, you get your varnish, put a couple of coats of that on it, and that's that fly gone. So, hopefully, it turned out not too bad. And you can see that I could have probably chose a better color shirt to show off the blue, but hopefully, you've seen enough there and uh, you give it a go. And uh, tight lines and good luck, and thanks very much for watching.